This is a really important game-changing breakthrough in early disease diagnosis, which harnesses the power of quantum nanodiamonds and can give test results within minutes. Early detection of infectious diseases is important to protect both patients and populations. So you can protect individual patients by early diagnosis leading to early treatment and improved prognosis. You can in turn protect populations by early diagnosis leading to the prevention of onward transmission. The big challenge in early disease diagnosis is that the virus is present at astonishingly low levels. Now, gold standard laboratory tests such as PCR are incredibly sensitive, but they have limited access and it requires sending samples off to the lab, waiting for test results and follow-up appointments. By contrast, very simple lateral flow tests, which are the most commonly used point of care tests um, in the world, um, often lack the sensitivity needed to detect these very early stages of an infection. And so they may potentially miss cases. Our diamond diagnostic assay aims to address this urgent need and deliver a dramatic enhancement in test sensitivity at the point of care. So the collaboration between iSense and UCLQ came about through a common interest in this atomic defect known as an NV center in diamond. Now, for a long time, we've been excited about the NV center in diamond for its use in quantum technologies. It can be used as a quantum bit uh, to store information in its spin, um, or as a quantum sensor that could be scanned over material to make measurements of, of magnetism with unprecedented sensitivity. But the iSense team recognized that it could be used as a marker for in vitro diagnostics. Um, for example, using it as a uh, detector for uh, diseases such as HIV. And so together we thought about ways in which we could enhance the sensitivity of detecting when there was NV centers in diamond and therefore using that as a way to boost the sensitivity of these medical diagnostic methods. Fresh nanodiamonds have a number of properties that make them attractive for in vitro diagnostics. So they have high brightness, they're, they can be manufactured at very low cost, um, they don't bleach or blink, and uh, most importantly, their emission can be selectively modulated. What we are essentially doing by modulating the field is creating a flashing fluorescent signal. I like to think of it as a lighthouse, where a regular flashing light allows us to see the lighthouse in the dark. And in a similar way, by creating this modulating fluorescent signal on our test line, we can see astonishingly low levels of virus. So we, we quantified the improvement over gold nanoparticles in two ways. The first way was using what we call the fundamental limit of detection. So we were just looking at the smallest number of nanoparticles we could detect. So the smallest number of gold nanoparticles we could detect and the smallest number of nanodiamonds we could detect. And we were able to detect 100,000 times fewer nanodiamonds than gold nanoparticles. So we saw a 100,000 fold improvement using nanodiamonds over gold nanoparticles. Our proof of concept test works in a laboratory setting. It uses a microscope to measure the fluorescence and it's been tested with a small number of samples. The next steps, which are actually already underway, are to make the tests more simpler and more amenable to point of care settings. And by that, I mean a doctor's surgery, a pharmacy, even for people who'd like to test in their own homes. So we've been reducing the number of steps involved in the assay. We have created, or we are creating a handheld prototype device which connects to a smartphone. It uses actually a smartphone camera to detect the fluorescence and replaces our benchtop microscope. And we also have plans to analyse a much larger number of clinical samples. Work is already underway to adapt this to a range of different diseases, including COVID. We're also working on neglected tropical diseases now, historically, um, the development of diagnostic tests have taken years. However, one of the exciting aspects of COVID is that this process has been accelerated. I'm incredibly proud of the interdisciplinary team behind this research. We are teams of engineers, chemists, physicists, virologists and clinicians working together with funding from the iSense EPSRC Interdisciplinary Research Collaboration.